Good morning, everyone. Richard Copperthwaite for Northwest Access TV. We're back with our For the Record St. Albans Today show. We were off last week when we ordinarily would have been on because of Veterans Day, but we're back. Happy to have St. Albans Mayor Tim Smith. Hello, Richard. And a special guest this morning, uh, Alan Mashtier, the St. Albans Town's uh, Public Works Director, a late substitute for Brendan Diso, the board chair. Thanks, Alan, for jumping in at the last minute. I'm sure you had nothing better to do this morning for a half hour. I'm yeah, <laughs> love it. We're up early checking roads, and I love to fill in. Boy, in fact, roads uh, a little... Yeah, a little. I woke up to, in fact, I, I, I keep my weather log. I measured at my St. Albans City House uh, about a third of an inch of snow, but enough to make the roads a little little slippery. A little bit on the higher elevations. Yeah, everything did you, down did you below throw is any, good. Did you do anything with those roads? Yeah, I got a couple trucks out, put really? some down on the higher elevations. But yeah. it's from a high street up in the city, you know, it's yeah. always a little bit different. So Yeah. Well, I guess that time of year, mid mid November. Yep. I guess that time of year. Tim, again, haven't seen you for three weeks, but uh, boy, things certainly have uh, kind of gone downhill on the uh, COVID-19 mm -hmm. front with the state uh, putting in more restrictions. Uh, how are things looking locally? It seem to be going the wrong way for the moment anyway, huh? Yeah, I was looking at uh, I, um, the cases throughout the county. I think we're up to 169 since the beginning. Yeah. Um, the town actually has more than the city. I think the city had 38. And the, and the town at 45 or vice versa, I'm not yeah. sure. But between the two, there's about 80, 80 some odd cases, or has been. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this is sort of uh, like Groundhog Day. Uh, when we, we started doing these shows back in April, I guess it was, yeah. it was, um, you know, we, Brendan and I did a lot of reinforcing of expectations yeah. about wearing the mask and social distancing. And, and I think the governor is once again doing a great job, but I th and then he's, he's doing his best to try to keep business open. Um, and mm -hmm. I think it's up to the general public to try to reinforce his requests or his mandates, if you will, and, mm -hmm. and um, keep that separation and, and um, sort of isolate for another who knows how long, m month or two anyways, till yeah. we see a decline. Hopefully it's not that long, but. Of course, uh, yeah, the governor, I guess, uh, last week, uh, the bars bars are now closed. Right. I guess restaurants can still, restaurants I was interested still yesterday if there'd be new restrictions on that front, but there weren't. I guess restaurants are still okay till 10. Yeah. Are local restaurants, to your knowledge, are they hanging in with this at the I moment think, anyway? I think they're hanging in. I don't think anyone's, um, oh, yeah going gangbusters by any means. I yeah. think I think the local community has done a great job of supporting the businesses, you know, to the best of the best of their ability. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but the tough part is, uh, you know, th this is a little bit different in my mind from when a lot of the mandates mandates took place in April because your days were getting longer. The weather was getting better. Right. Um, you know, you could get outside. Now we're at the reverse of that. So the days are shorter, weather's not conducive for a lot of people to get outside. Um, so I think there's gonna be a lot more issues with isolation. Um, you know, we had a conversation yesterday about the uh, older population, you know, single or e even a couple that are, you know, trapped, not trapped, but, you know, forced to stay in their homes. Yeah. And, um, I think, I think that we're going to see some other uh, repercussions of, of this um, just from a social uh, environment. So. Yeah. Or if you lose daylight now at about uh, 4.30 or so or not, not long thereafter that. Yeah, I was count, I'm counting the days to till we start going the other way. Yeah, in about a month or so. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I keep track of this pretty carefully. We have to get back to either Jan 30 or Jan 31 when we get back to uh, 5 p.m. sunset. That way to do But at least, I guess, uh, looking for slightly good news, I think we just lose in sunset now, about I think 425, we just lose another 10 or 15 minutes. So it's we're, yep. we're almost in as All bad right. shape as we're gonna be. But tough situation. Alan, we talked off air. Um, I walked down to the Bay Park 
just about every every day. I was down there yesterday, and of course the tent that had been put up a little while ago, taken down, and now without seeing a, a newspaper story, the running of the Bells event, which sounded like such a great event that I'm sure a lot of people were looking forward to the day after Thanksgiving. The in-person event itself, of course, canceled now. Yeah, um, unfortunately with COVID. We had a, it would have been a great event. We had a lot of vendors lined up, about 30 craft vendors. Did you really? Wow. And that was the reason for the tent. We were trying to do everything socially distanced, so yeah. people would have entered the stone house and walked in one direction through through the tent back into the stone house. Um, we had it set up early because obviously a lot of lights and decorating, heaters and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, we'll try again next year. It'll be a good event. I mean, um, the fireworks obviously are canceled. Um, so hopefully, day the next Bay Day, hopefully we'll be in we'll be in better better shape here. I hope by July that the Great Race and Bay Day will go off without a hitch. Be nice. Um, the town has taken over the Great Race, so um, the chamber had given it up, and the town took that over. So we're hoping yeah. to make some changes and really promote that. So I'm hoping that by then there's a, a calm in the storm, you might say. Yeah. But uh, we're still gonna light up the park and the trees will be lit. So if people wanna drive by and see the decorations and the tree lit up, it will be there, but. Yeah, I know you guys, you folks do a nice job as, as of course as a city with the Taylor Park. But uh, yeah, like I said, I love walking down there. Got a couple signs up, believe in peace. The sign, signs are up, I noticed. Yep, yeah, we got um, the last of my banners that just got made. I got to pick those up. There will be some more yeah. up there, just inspiring words and hopefully bring a little cheer and, you know, inspiration to people in this dark time. Yeah, I hear you. Tim, what about Taylor Park? Uh, just uh, lighting lighting in the park, is that, is that a particular day that happens? Uh, kind of an event or no? Oh, no, that's a good question. No no event. No I'm event. not sure when they'll throw the switch. I'm guessing it's uh, probably that day after Thanksgiving. Yeah, so not too far away. Um, but it's all, it's wired, if you will. Yeah. And um, But the, definitely no event. Uh, the closest thing to an event for the holidays is um, Festival of Trees will be asking merchants to display the decorated trees within their business window hmm. and people can bid on them uh, through that process but there won't, won't be any aggregation or event uh, uh, or any type of reception so that's where it's at this year to Allen's point you know hopefully uh, within a year we're back to having all these I, I, I personally think that when we do get back to a point when we have community events like Bay Day, uh, you know, the Festival of Trees, um, St. Patrick's Day Parade, all of those. I think, um, assuming everyone feels comfortable, I think we will have some of the largest turnouts that we've seen. I think people are obviously itching to, to get out and see mm -hmm. their neighbors and, uh, you know, go to community events and, and try to, you know, try to maybe make up for lost time. Yeah, you'd think there'd be some pent-up demand out, yeah, out there big, so. big time. And it does sound like if there's any encouraging news, the vaccine news seems right. pretty encouraging at this point. I know the stock market likes it. Boy, the stock market, <laughs> yeah, un, un, unreal. And I, 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 I just, I'm, since Alan's here, and I, he's, he's heard me say this, but <laughs> I thought your staff did a great job on the park this, um, this summer. I thought it looked great. Uh, you got a lot of good stuff going on. You know, you and I have... Um, I've talked about the softball field and the wonderful job you've done with those. So kudos to your staff and you for um, really making the, the Bay Park into a destination. Yep, another good summer Thank for you. the farmer's market, I guess, Alan? Farmer's market went off really well this year. We had a yeah. lot more vendors. Um, once again, we tried to do that as a socially distant event with people going only one direction. So it is growing. I think it gives the community another outlet you know we had music down there and and the vendors right. and having it during the week gives a chance for them to use up their product and then still hit the taylor park farmers market so i think they do come hand in hand and it helps out the community in both yeah so. no like i said i'm in that park about every other day or so i think you've done a great job with the park speaking of parks uh 
Cohen Park, anything, anything new or any, any plans for Cohen? At one point I heard possibly a tennis court. Is that uh, nothing getting any uh, serious uh, thought um, to? Little by little. We, um, we had talked about either a basketball or tennis court down that okay. way. Um, pickleball seems to be a big hit yeah. these days. We did um, yeah. this year paint lines. So there's actually two pickleball courts on um, the basketball court at the Bay Park. Yeah. So people can bring their nets and paddles. Yeah. Um, obviously, a couple of years ago, we did the pavilion at Cohen. I thought about maybe a wiffle ball field down in that area. It's not quite big enough for a softball field, but, yeah. you know, another outlet or... Sure. Even some disc golf or something like that. Hard X got that now, and yeah. um, I'm hearing that it's a really nice course. And so, good, good thought. Speaking of Hard X, um, is the lodge that's been under construction is that in pretty pretty good shape at this point? Um, you'd probably have to ask Tim. Tim, about you got that. a handle on that's, the? Uh, yeah, they've got. Uh, they're doing the final woodworking inside. Right. Um, they're. Um, Actually, we had hoped uh, before this new spike in COVID, we had hoped to have our, our December 9th, I think, 9th uh, council meeting up there. Oh, really? Just to showcase it. Um, but obviously, we won't be doing that. But we are we're having a conversation. Uh, we hope to um, bring some of the council people up and show them, do some individual tours just so they get a feel for what, what it was. It looks great. Yeah. I was up there on uh, Saturday with Andy Crossman and Jess Frost, and oh, you uh, did your big sign sign did, day. Yeah, I did the signs and signs. Um, uh, signs turned out great. Uh, <coughs> Jason Brace did them. Uh, he has a woodworking business, and um, you know, all routed out signs. And I think we put up 50, 55 trail signs really? uh, throughout all the hill and Hardack. So huh. um, they look great. I think it will really. Um, It'll really be a support tool for those who haven't been up there and maybe don't feel like they're comfortable not knowing where to go. Yeah. But I think uh, the signs will make a huge difference. And, and then the next step will be to do a, a better map that shows those uh, trails and what the names of the trails. We've, we've never had names on the trails before. Right. So um, yeah. we've had a lot of cooperation. Uh, we put a kiosk up at the Congress Street entrance uh, with support from... Um, the, the Zern family and uh, Bridget and Valdemar Garibay, because um, hmm. we have to have access all this hill across their property, and hmm. um, which was a former Governor Smith in. So, um, yeah, Hardack and all this hill, and Alan mentioned the disc golf. There's a the activity up there is <clears throat> uh, above and beyond anything we've seen before, hmm. and mainly due to the fact that the COVID sort of. Uh, encourage people to get out, and uh, a lot of people found all this hill and hard act. So mm -hmm. we're excited about that, and it's it's a great resource for the city and town. The, all this hill, both of them, I think I think hard act is all in the town, but all this hill splits between city and town, mm -hmm. and um, I think it's a great family destination. Yeah, no, a tremendous resource. I'm lucky enough. I live about on just about a five minute walk from jumping into all this hill, so it's a uh, yeah, it's a great great resource. Speaking of um, Hardak, winter events, are they kind of on hold now? Have you got a, a well, feel I, for them? I, I, uh, no, not yet, I don't think. I think we're um, still monitoring it. this. We, we never know when the snow is going to come. Yeah. So it could be, you know, things should be different come January when, when we do have snow. Yeah. Um, but they are looking, I, I spoke to Andrew Gratton at the rec department, and they're looking at um, expanding the hours at Hardak so that it's. Um, Currently, there's no school on Wednesday, so Wednesday it would be open longer hours, a couple evenings during the week, as opposed to just Friday, Saturday, and Sunday afternoon. Yeah. So they're looking at more evenings during the week, longer on Wednesday. They're looking at some um, programming that uh, will hopefully attract some kids. One would be a sort of a ski club. Um, I think the early name would be the Wolf Pack. And, um, Basically, they would promote that and encourage kids to get out and ski and both cross country, downhill and snowshoeing. So they'd be huh. trying to create a, a ski club of that nature, and um, which I think um, could be a big success. So uh, 
As far as we know, I think they're still moving forward. I don't know about snow making. We haven't had any real consistent, and we probably won't for a while, but yeah. cold nights. So <clears throat> I think the expectation is that the skiing will still happen. Well, that, that'd be nice. In case you're watching us live, uh, feel free to call in, 528-5315. Uh, we'll take a, any calls if they come in. Back, so back to school. Most kids back to four four days a week, or depending on grade no, level, uh, not BFA. BFA, I, I understood the tech center. All kids are back full time at the tech center. Okay. Um, that's either started this past Monday or last Monday. Um, as for my kids who are in grades um, uh, four, no, uh, what are we? Four, four, six, and eight. Uh, the four, fourth grader is going back four days a week. The other two, I think, are supposed to go back four days as of December 3rd, but there's some rumblings about huh. that possibly not happening. So I guess uh, wait yeah. and see and see how that turns out. But huh. there's been few or little issues um, regarding COVID at the school. And I, I know my fourth grader, um, uh, the four days a week seems to be working out well. So yeah. Sounds like the governor is certainly hoping that the more... Uh, in school situation, I'm sure he would hate to go back on, on that, as I guess probably just about every parent would too. But yeah. so hope the school situation sounds like it's working out, I guess, reasonably well. Yeah, I, I think so. Um, <coughs> yeah. You know, the, the older two are still doing the virtual classes and come home with a packet of inf for work. Yeah. And, um, you know, I guess it's making the best of the situation. Yeah. Alan, first time I've had a chance to talk to you. I, I can only assume you're kind of happy to have a new public works garage go up as much as you loved your your old dig. So, but new PW garage working out uh, very well. Yeah, it's working out great. It's, yeah. Um, nice to have a you know, clean garage that you can get around, work on the equipment better. It's warm, yeah. plenty of room to move around. We were pretty tight, and a lot of our equipment didn't fit in the old garage. So it's nice having everything under one roof. And right now the salt shed's going out, the new salt shed. So, so that's under construction now? That's under construction. Huh. That should be done hopefully just before Christmas. Um, it won't be used this year. The structure itself will be done, but the paving inside it and around it won't be done till spring. Huh. So next year will be the first year being able to utilize that new salt shed. Huh. So work worked out well. Um, so the old site, and again, I go by your old site just about every day. I'm down there. But you did a nice job just cleaning that up a little bit, just driving by. It's got a, just a much you know, cleaner look, if that's the word I want there. I know Brendan had mentioned there was some talk having, was it the salt shed down there, turning that into a skating rink? Any more talk of that, or is the COVID killed? Any thoughts about that, too? Um, we had worked with SASA. They were going to use it as like a practice rink. Yeah. And that was all dependent if we had gotten into um, our salt shed this year, the okay. new one. Which didn't so happen. obviously that got pushed off. Okay. Um, maybe in the future. Um, huh. I have looked into like synthetic ice and huh. stuff like that for the town. Um, you can get quite a lifespan out of synthetic ice and you don't have to worry about the cold conditions. Huh. I mean, I think having a ice rink down there and getting the air the compressors and refrigeration and everything would be quite costly yeah and <clears throat> maintaining it zamboni and stuff like that so um it's not out of the realm but yeah. you know, it's just nothing that's going to happen this year right any any thoughts again on the old the town's former mostly former uh, public works garage site any thoughts on the future of that site um Nothing definite yet. Obviously, um, we're working hard for the new um, town hall. Town hall's a biggie, obviously, now for you guys. Yep. I mean, the voters did pass to purchase the land and uh, yeah. move forward with the design. And then, um, and that land actually connects right towards the land of the old DPW. Huh. So, so does that look like a good, and you happy with that? I mean, it looks like a good site for a new town I, hall? I think it's a great site. Yeah. Um, this. The town recently got approved as a um, village center, the right. Bay did. Right. So, I mean, it's a great area to grow. I'm trying to make the park better and more inviting, you know, and the chance with the village center gives you opportunities to have more grants through the state. So 
businesses that are down there could get facelift. Um, yeah. You know, there's historical grants. You know, the pier could be um, improved. So I think it's exciting for the town. I think that's a great area. And, you know, I believe we're hoping to go to the voters in March for the town hall. So, yeah. yes, you know, if that gets approved, then I think that's when the talks about the old DPW lot will come in more, you know, yeah. what we're going to do with it. So there's a lot of, a lot of things. I know people want boat launches there, but it is kind of a shallow area of the lake, but yeah. it's a great area just to launch kayaks and canoes though, and get those people away from the Hathaway Point area. Which gets uh, often gets uh, just OD'd out there. You see uh, trailers parked along the road. Not the best situation out there. Exactly. Although the city, I guess, did did repave it and relined it the other day. I went by it yesterday. In fact, looks like they did a decent job, but yeah. definitely not enough room for the demand at times. Exactly. So, but we'll see. And uh, speaking of the Bay Dock, again, I walked I walked there yesterday. Nice job in the summer. You certainly made it a more uh, just user friendly place with the benches and and stuff, but uh, I know if you had unlimited money, you'd probably do more than that, but uh, but kudos for making it, a, like I said, a, a, a more friendly place to visit. I certainly use it myself quite a bit. Yeah, it's it's amazing, especially with COVID, how many people have been fishing lately. So yeah. during the summer, that dock was packed, but yeah. just putting some flowers and trees and the benches out there just yeah. makes it a little more inviting. Yeah. I did use some green traffic, green traffic paint that um, yeah, kind of like your more green. Like have a grass field instead of a yeah. hot blacktop road, but yeah, no, good, good job. Well, thank Boy, you. speaking of the lake, I'm I'm really concerned. Uh, I pay. I've got kayaks down near Kilcare, but the lake typically is rebounding now in the fall after it typically gets down. You know, just about every summer down to about 94 feet. The lake is not, as I hardly have to tell you, has just not come back yeah, at all. I'm kind of freaked out if we don't have a lot of snow this winter. Another pretty dry summer. Boy, I think we could be talking close to record low lake level next summer. I'm just, just stats. Uh, we're just at above 94 feet above sea level now. A year ago, it had gotten down to about 94 feet, and a year ago, it was back up to about 97 feet. We're about three feet lower than a year ago. Yeah. We'll, we'll see, and I'm sure the marina folks, I'm sure they got to be concerned about that. Yeah, I'd like definitely. to think at some point we'll start seeing a lot more precipitation around here. I think I think we're ahead for a rainy winter. Uh, anything I've read recently says that winters yeah. are changing. They're a little bit warmer. Yeah, yeah. Which isn't a great thing for skiers, but it's not a real great thing yeah. for municipalities either because, yeah. you know, we're still going to have cool weather, so we're hovering on that freezing point. So yeah. I'd much rather have a 24-inch snowstorm than a, a one-inch rain event with ice. You, you and me both. Anyways, we'll see what happens with the lake. Tim, the police chief situation, any news to report on that? Uh, yes. The city after a, a new we, permanent um, chief? I think we had about 14 applicants, really? of which uh, it's been narrowed down to two. From and in, including one of those applicants, uh, Morris Mo Lamont, the Mo did interim a, chief? Mo did apply for it. Can you, can you report, is he one of the finalists, or can he not go down uh, can't, that can't go down that road at this okay. point. Um, but down to two finalists. Two finalists. Um, hmm. Dominic is um, forming the interview committee. Um, hmm. I can tell you that, um, and once again, um, we still need to notify the individuals, but we've done all the interviews for the police commission. Okay. And we've... Um, we have made our selections. Uh, we have a commission of seven individuals with one alternate. Hmm. Uh, as I said, we had uh, we had 15 applicants for that, all qualified, all. Hmm. As I've shared with a number of people, we could have uh, easily had done um, 100 different makeups of those 15 individuals and would have been fine uh, based on the quality of those those people and those uh, all of them who had applied for the position. So. Hmm. Um, and you looked at that, and you think you're looking for that group to be a pretty ac active group? Um, early on, yes, to get to get organized and focused, and then, yeah. and, and no one knows, but uh, what we've shared with the applicants was the expectation, once they get up and running, and, and uh, we, we figure out exactly what the, the charge is going to be moving forward and how that might play out, uh, the expectation is they'll be meeting on a quarterly basis. Okay. So... 
um, but early on, it'll probably be a monthly basis. Yeah. So we're in the process of notifying those people who were selected. Um, timing works perfectly with the interview process for the police chief. So um, once the chief is hired and the commission is brought together, you know, there'll be, and not that, not that the commission has to move forward with the police chief, but obviously it's going to be good to build those relationships and, yeah. and network with the, with the new uh, police chief. So mm -hmm. um, I, th I think the expectation is um, the police chief will be in place by the end of the year. And, um, and the commission will probably be meeting here within the next two to three weeks. Right. The city, city PD obviously heading towards a, a downsizing, losing the contract with St. Albans right. Town uh, come July, July 1st. Is that, is city, staffing wise, is City PD doing okay at this point? Still pretty much uh, the Yeah, same? at this point, I mean, they, I think there's still a couple of vacancies, but, um, you know, they'll probably try to get through with overtime um, just because of the loss of the town contract come July. So, yeah. um, so um, the staff, uh, I, think, well, I think we have a great force right now. And, um, you know, we'll see where we're at come July. Right. Budget work, is that underway or getting close to underway? Yeah, definitely or? underway, um, mm -hmm. having those discussions. Um, and as I think about a quarterly taxes due in the next, uh, pretty pretty right about now, right. in the next like week, week or so. And, and I guess for the town too, quarterly taxes, I think, Alan due in the town by end of November. Yep. Mm -hmm. LOT money, a local option tax. Uh, Haven't gotten any reports effect. on that yet. Yeah. Um, um, you know, it's, uh, the quarter's not over, from, right. so we won't. We probably won't know anything on that till February, is my right. guess. Yeah. But it is in place, and um, we'll see what the numbers are come come 2021. Yeah. Any at this point, uh, March town meeting day is still a few months away. Anything kind of out of the ordinary coming up at March town meeting? The way it looks now. Yeah, I mean, we we have. Um, a number of infrastructure projects that need to be looked at. Um, I think we talked about it last time with another water tank up on the mm -hmm. up on Congress Street to give us that redundancy. Um, so that's uh, I know staff is working through conversations with uh, nearby property owners, and so that one that seems to be high on the priority list. Um, you know, still looking at. Um, I think we still have about a million dollars left on the TIF and how that might be utilized. Um, so there's, um, uh, you know, we still haven't finished um, all the sidewalks, but the, that's, those have been approved, but uh, we'll wrap those up this year in the spring. So mm -hmm. um, pool still being discussed. Um, yeah, right. So that's, that's, you know, we have, we, we, we're trying to be conscientious about how, how many projects we bring forward to the taxpayers because yeah. obviously we can only afford so many. Um, have you got another year if need be? I guess it would be need be. We're going to gonna have to be. I mean, without, you know, when nothing's going to happen, either repair or a new, new facility before yeah. June. So we're going to have to squeak through another, another year. And you think that's, that's hopefully do, doable? Uh, I think so. I mean, uh, held up pretty well this year. Yeah. Um, I know Public Works worked hard on it to make sure it was uh, usable. So um, keep our fingers crossed. I think I think it is. I think it will get through another year. So. Yeah. Alan, is it just down a just last minute here? So with roads again, uh, a little snow on the roads this morning. You're in decent shape for material to treat the road. Have you got what you need? Hopefully to get you through the winter. Yeah, we uh, we went out to bed and got a new vendor this year, so yeah. the turnaround time on getting our deliveries are good. So our shed is full of salt and salmon salt, and I'm hoping for a quiet winter, but uh, we'll see. You know, salt prices along with everything else is going up, so right. we try to keep the budget as low as possible. Right. Where do you pull? Where do you pull your salt from, Alan? Uh, we're getting it from Compass. It's out of Montreal. So um, they are probably about ten dollars a ton cheaper than the vendor that we usually use. On that note, we got to call it a day. But uh, thanks, to Alan Nash, here, the Public Works Director for St. Albans Town, for jumping in at the end. Alan, good to see you, and St. Albans Mayor Tim Smith. Thanks, Tim. You're welcome, Richard. And again, folks, kind of a weird Thanksgiving coming up, but I hope it's a good Thanksgiving for you. Be safe. <laughs>